After getting hit by a car, she was she was walking the dog, was taken to the emergency room to get treated, and has also made a report to the police. But we found out that the driver did not have insurance and proceeded to tell us that there was nothing they could do. Ugh. I hate to hear that. That's a terrible story. A week later, grandmother had a stroke and had to be hospitalized. Goodness, this is just getting worse. Sorry, Dee Dee. Hey guys, I'm attorney Darren Miller, and welcome back to D Law. Okay, here's my disclaimer, guys. I'm giving the best advice I can based upon the very limited information that I have. So it may not be completely accurate, but it's the best I've got based upon the few sentences I've got in these circumstances, okay? All right, first question. Okay, so Oshkosh 2233 says, I got in, a, got in an argument with my twin brother and he choked me in the corner. I did not press charges when the police came. Should I press charges against him? Well, Oshkosh, I don't know. Should you press charges? You have to decide. Was that was what he did to you so serious that you believe that something that something else needs to happen to him? Okay, because if you do press charges, then of course the police can come out and arrest him, and he can be placed in jail and can be prosecuted by the district attorney's office should they choose to move forward with the charges against him. So again, you need to decide were the injuries to him sufficient enough for you to want to do something to warrant other action being done. That, that You have to make that decision for yourself. I can't decide for you. How do you feel about this situation? It's a criminal matter. Um, and so you have to maybe sit down and talk with your family and decide, do you prosecute your brother? I don't know. If somebody's going to come and choke me, um, I'm not calling the police. I'm going to take care of business myself. I'm not advising you to do that, but I'm just telling you, um, you know, if it's me, I'm going to find some other way of taking care of it myself, especially if it's my close brother. Okay. That's just me large printer that's this person's name <laughs> i'm keeping that in there <laughs> anyway large printer would like to know um i broke my arm at the hotel while on vacation any considerations before i depart in a few days well yes okay so this apparently happened while he was in vacation in puerto rico well first and foremost you need to seek medical care again if you've got a broken arm Again, these things can, infections can take place, it can set incorrectly, it can get worse if it's not properly dealt with. So first, get the proper medical care. And if it's me, I'm going to put it, do as minimal overseas as possible before I can get here to the United States and get better care, because there's typically better care over here than over there. Okay, that's the first thing. Now, I would next make sure that the that you have an incident report from the from the hotel are they admitting that the hospital did something wrong there's not enough facts for me to know there but if you are injured on their premises or due to their negligence it should be their responsibility and certainly i would get an incident report i would contact the management to see okay what is their position on this are they going to take financial responsibility for this particular situation and what does that mean if you're going to be around for a few days I would certainly suggest moving forward with establishing a claim and making sure that they are going to be financially responsible for your costs and expenses as you move forward. So make sure to address those particular issues. Take as many pictures and get as much evidence as you can before you leave. Because once you leave, unless you plan on heading back to Puerto Rico, you can't go back and get that evidence very simply or cheaply. So get as much evidence and information and things together. I know it's your vacation, but, and you're gonna have to do it with one arm because that well, no, other arm is gonna be broke, but you've gotta get the information and put things together as much as possible, which means get a decision from them. Are they going to accept financial responsibility? If they're not, then you may have to seek the help of an attorney.
we've got ICI111 says, my father hit me in the head with a brick at the end of last summer. I lost, I lost nearly everything because of his abuse. Can I sue? Oof, boy. Um, first of all, ICI, I am really sorry to hear about your situation and circumstance. That is, that's difficult to be dealing with, especially at the hands of a family member. Um, can you sue? So the answer is resoundingly yes. Um, if someone strikes you, injures you, damages, damages you, they are responsible for making that right. So absolutely you can sue your father. Um, obviously from reading some of the other information, there's a lot more that kind of goes into this, but you can bring forth an action against your father. Now, um, with regards to the other abuse that you're talking about, I'm not exactly sure the nature of that abuse, but if he is doing something that is inappropriate, illegal, um, untoward, uh, those things are also potentially compensable, okay? The problem that you may run into, ICI, is that if there's not insurance involved, um, or your father's not independently wealthy, many lawyers don't see this to be potentially an attractive case. So just be careful of that, be cautious of it, because again, because litigation is so expensive and it takes such a long period of time, uh, lawyers in my position, we wanna make sure that we have a, 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 a big target to go after like someone who's going to essentially write us a check at the end of the day after we've done all the work to put a case, to, a case together. So just make sure you do all that analysis before you make your final decision to file a lawsuit against your father. We wish you all the best, ICI. That's, that's a tough deal. Throw away 148 and a whole bunch of other numbers. Throw away 148 says, my girlfriend, now ex, punched me in the liver in the liver, that's not very nice. Well, that must have been painful. And won't pay for my emergency room bill. Hmm, that sucks. Can you sue when your ex injures you in your liver? Liver, I hate liver shot. Almost as bad as a kidney shot. Can you sue them for your damages and for this uh, emergency room bill? Well, the answer is yes. You certainly can sue them for non-payment if there's an agreement with which to pay. Um, again, uh, if I'm you, I'm going to try and contact them and try and resolve it as quickly and easily as possible because litigation can be expensive, very expensive, can take a lot of time also. The question is, is it worth suing over a thousand dollars? And that's what you kind of have to decide because going to court takes time. You got to go file. You have to pay court costs. And then you have to figure out, okay, is it going to be worth my time, energy, and effort to go and pursue this $1,000? I'm not saying you shouldn't do it, but you need to assess the whole situation and see, is it worth your time, energy, and money to do it, okay? Because here's the deal, okay? And everyone, I want to sue. I'm taking you to court. Everyone wants to do that. But then even if you, if the judge just say, I'm awarding you your $1,000, and you, you get a judgment against the defendant, well then guess what we've got to do next? We got to collect it, okay? We have to try and collect that money. And collecting money from people can be very difficult. It's not like on Judge Judy where, okay, the, the show has agreed to essentially pay for those damages and they're gonna write you a check and send you home. This is a difficult, this is a lengthier, more challenging process. So just be wary of that as we continue. And when you make your decision throw away, um, my personal opinion, I don't think I'm going to sue for that amount because I think if you do collect the money after you assess your time, energy, and putting into it, you might not really make that much. Ruthless asks, Determine the value of a car accident injury. I was in a car accident recently, rear-ended. Okay, getting interesting. Um, I received a minor concussion. Ooh. Our attorney is retiring soon and not taking new cases. But he said if we he said if we get the police report, medical records, he would send a letter to the insurance company 
and um, and send out a demand for compensation. Uh, okay, I'm seeing some red flags already. We'll get into that. Um, if they reject my demand, you are first to another attorney has worked with before. My well, question is, how do I determine the amount of the settlement? I missed several days of work, and I know not to expect a six-figure set settlement or even half of one. What pro what process should I use for this? What process did you use? Okay, ruthless be you. I'm going to give you a straightforward and solid answer. Um, you need to find a new lawyer. Um, if this lawyer is telling you, okay, let's just think about this logically. Well, I'm retiring soon and I'll send out a demand letter for you, but if it doesn't get resolved, I'm gonna send you over to someone else. Do you really want that person representing you? No, no, absolutely. Look, if I, if I, have a, if I want an attorney, if I get in an accident, I want someone who is on fire for my case. I want someone who is going to live and die with my case. Give me answers. Tell me what's going to happen. Give me strategy and address these issues. The very fact that you're telling me that you're dealing with a concussion. A minor concussion is a TBI injury, traumatic brain injury issue. You need to properly address that because that could be serious. I've seen it before where it could be fatal. Fatal. Okay, we need to take that seriously. So you need to get a lawyer on board from the beginning who's going to take your case seriously, who's going to send you to treatment, who's going to give you the proper strategy, who's going to tell you, hey, if these things don't work, I'm all in and I will take your case to trial. And if that is not this particular lawyer, they go find another one. Get rid of that guy. Let's go. Ruthless for you. If you've got a question about it, call me. Contact me. I'll give you an answer. I'll give you a strategy. I'll tell you straight. If you've got something good, great. If not, I'll give you the strategy and you don't have to sign a contract unless you we decide we want to help each other. So let's just go from there. Give me a shout and I'll, I'll help you with it. Okay. Synthetic Meat says, got bitten by a dog. What are my next steps? Synthetic Meats was working for UPS in his vehicle, delivering, went to a home and went to deliver a package. In doing so, a dog came out and bit Synthetic Meats. Uh, he filed a workers' comp claim, uh, went to get, get some emergency care, had to get a booster, and he's wondering what he should do next. Okay. Um, He's saying it was not bad, mostly soft tissue damages, but it still hurts. His elbow hurts. Um, and, it, and emotionally, he's shaking and crying after the accident. So suffering some anxiety and PTSD. He's only, this person's only 19 and wants to know what they should do next. Well, synthetic meat. So I'm really sorry. Um, I'm really sorry that you're going through this. Uh, Unfortunately, it's happening more, a, a lot more now than it ever has before because there's so many companies that are taking their packages directly to people's homes and places of business. It is becoming much more frequently. So dog bites are something that unfortunately we're seeing a lot more of. Uh, but so far, it looks like you're doing many of the right things with regards to um, some starting with your workers' cop claim. Um, the next thing I think you need to do, obviously, is get the homeowner's information so you can start moving forward with regards to a homeowner's claim. Uh, that dog should have been restrained. Dog should not have been um, um, uh, in a position where it, it, it bit you and caused those types of injuries. And so you need to address that. Now, the next thing I would think about doing if I was your attorney is treating outside of the workers' comp system. Work, workers' comp, in, in especially here in Texas, kind of sucks. And because it's a nationwide issue, from what I'm understanding, it kind of sucks in many places throughout the country. So I would be treating outside of the workers' comp system because workers' comp typically likes to get you in and get you back to work as quickly as possible. Whereas with my clients that treat with dog bite injuries, I send them to specialists that deal with these issues fairly consistently so that we can get any kind of MRIs and kind of testing or, or whatever is necessary uh, with regards to addressing my client's injuries. 
You've also talked about the, the psychological component. That's a big deal, again, because, again, if you're working and your job entails you interacting with people and folks and, other, and maybe even other dogs, you need to be prepared to deal with this. If you don't, it could scar you for your life. Um, and again, if you need help as related to addressing this issue, let me know. I can kind of point you in the, in the right direction, even if you're in another state. DD1960 says that her grandmother got hit by a by a backing up car, injured her leg and her spine. Oh, poor grandma. That's that's terrible. After getting hit by a car, she was she was walking the dog, was taken to the emergency room to get treated, and has also made a report to the police. Where we found out that the driver did not have insurance and proceeded to tell us that there was nothing they could do. Ugh. I hate to hear that. That's a terrible story. A week later, grandmother had a stroke and had to be hospitalized. Goodness, this is just getting worse. Sorry, Dee Dee. We were able to talk to the driver and she mentioned she was a college student. If we were to take her case to a lawyer, would it be worth our time? Any advice would be appreciated. Ugh. Dee Dee 1960. I wish I had better news for you, but I don't. Um, typically speaking, if you have a situation where someone is driving without insurance, we call that riding dirty, no insurance. That's not good. That's not an attractive case. Uh, and, and, and as you can imagine why, we need a deep pocket to go after. Okay, we need an insurance company, typically speaking, or someone who has resources or assets. A college student is going to have nothing zero and so we need to have assets with which to kind of go after the only other potential saving grace dd 1960 does your mom have any kind of uninsured motorist or insurance on her own vehicle okay if you've got insurance on your own vehicle and uninsured motorist policy that would step into the place of the other of the wrongdoers insurance company so if, if you have that, we can try and do something. You can try and do something. But if you don't, it's not looking too good. Okay? So I wish I had better news for you, Dee Dee. I've got my fingers crossed for you and especially for Grandma. But uh, if we don't have insurance, that's most lawyers are just not going to move forward with a case like that. Sorry. Sweet Oklahoma. What the hell? Sweet Oklahoma. Oh, okay. So this is like Oklahoma, but you like Oklahoma, like homie. Okay. Okay. That's cool. I like it. I like some of these names. Okay. Sweet. <laughs> slipped and slipped in Starbucks. Yesterday morning, I slipped on the wet floor in Starbucks. Um, there was no signage to indicate slippery floors. Okay. It's not good. I had to go to the urgent care, get x-rayed, but it was determined that I had an acute sprain, no fracture. Okay? They also said I may need a CT scan in a week. Okay? Uh, da, 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 da. I've missed several days of work, impacting my daily tasks, um, going upstairs and downstairs, I have pain. Is this something worth pursuing to at least have them cover my medical bills and time missed at work? Well, Oklahoma. I say you potentially have something here, okay? Starbucks, first of all, has a duty to make sure that their premises are safe for their customers to come on to their property, buy their product, and take their butts home. They failed to do that. It was wet. There was no sign out there to warn them. It resulted in injury. Clearly, they were negligent, and they owe you a duty to take care of your damages. So this is certainly a case that we would take. Um, while the cases, the damages rain, range all over the place, um, I did a slip and fall case last year, um, and because client had to end up having surgery done, we ended up selling that case for a little over $200,000. So in terms of valuation, depending on the damages, it could be, it, the case could have some substantial value, especially when you're talking about loss of use, um, 
medical bills, um, inability to work, lost wage, a lost wage claim. All of those things, Starbucks would be responsible for if they were negligent in the operation of their business. So, Oklahoma, you may have something here. Uh, Oklahoma, I'm glad to be your homie on this one in terms of giving you advice. Just a reminder, guys, keep liking, subscribing, and keep on watching. Let us know your comments, your thoughts. We want to know what you're thinking. We want to hear from you. Guys, well, I don't know about you, but those questions this week sound fairly interesting. We're getting some good ones in here, and I like where we're going with this, okay? So this we're starting to pick up some momentum. We're getting some more questions. I'm giving you good legal advice. So please keep those questions coming. Make sure you keep on watching. If there's anything in particular you want to see, let us know. Keep subscribing. Keep us on our toes. And let's keep this moving forward. I'm Dean Miller. And once again, this is Do Law.